Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Phoenix League. It is season nine. I am Brackish Brit, and I am joined by the marvelous Black Bloxer to bring you the first series out of the Platinum Division. Wonderful. We're really excited to get into this. We had a great season last time around, and we're very excited to get into this new season, see what these new teams have to bring. We've got some new teams joining us, and we are looking to highlight them for you in this opening game of the season. Yeah, first up, we've got Divide Esports versus the Destiny Rebellion. Heck of a name coming out. We'll see if they can live up to the... Uh, the weight of their name. Both teams we have seen nothing from before, and it does look like uh, some of them very, very interesting champion pools. You definitely could say that again. We're looking at the support from Divide Esports, who basically does not play a single tank or engaged champion. It is all AP majors. Might as well be a mid laner. Yeah, on top of that, an incredible amount of Velkos play, so may well see a, a ban come out towards that, but if not, Keep an eye on this guy. Anexu I looks set to just absolutely steamroll. Absolutely. And the Velkos could also be a really impactful champion since the mid laner does also play this. So this may be a little bit of a flex pick. Another flex pick could be the it. Echo. We do love flex yeah. picks. Really spice up the draft. Absolutely do. So for the time being, obviously, first series of the new season. The teams are going to need a little while to get used to how we uh, how we do this. So we're well, sorting out the lobby at the moment. Thinking about the most important thing of late, the current patch we're on. And of course, the big jungle changes came in 11.10. Absolutely. We've really been seeing a little bit of a weird jungle meta with a lot of AP champions with the rumble with the Morgana. Not what we're used to. We're used to seeing a lot more tanks, honestly. So it will be interesting to see which of these junglers from Haywire, from Toby Watt, will be able to pull out these really impactful champions and who will be sticking to what we've seen in seasons gone by. Well, I mean, both of them have considerable Udir play, so not even seasons gone by, but uh, just the this priority of spring dominated by Udir, and he has not died off just yet. So chances are there'll be very high pick and ban priority on that Udir. We'll just have to see once we get into game. It does look like, as we can see right now, the lobby is filling up nicely, so hopefully shouldn't be too long before we can get into the match proper. We look at the champion pool of these junglers. Toby Watt seems to mainly play the old engaged champions, the Hecarim, the Udyr, as well as things like the Sejuani and the Nunu. Whereas Haywire is really playing a lot more of these AP champions. So if Haywire is able to get himself onto some of these AP champions, which are stronger with this current patch, that may be a little bit of a advantage for the Destiny Rebellion. It certainly would be, and we'll have to see. I uh, did have a brief conversation with uh, Rob Man. He does seem to have a certain uh, champion up his sleeve for a certain matchup. We'll see if it comes up. Obviously, this is a best of three, so we have up to three chances to see him pull that one out. I won't, uh, won't let the one out too soon, of course, because we don't know who could be listening. Don't want to give anything away. The teams better be doing their own scouting, not watching the stream. That would be a little bit rude. Absolutely. Looks like the teams are just about ready to uh, well, set up ready in the lobby. Just waiting from the go from our marvellous producer, uh, Meg slash Saithu. We will see how it goes. Hopefully this game will be interesting. Obviously, in case you're a new listener to the um, Phoenix League, we do run best of threes. This will be a best of three um, competition with the side selection going the one team on red side, one team on blue side, switches for the next round, and then the loser is able to choose which side they wish to be on for that third game. Very good. Yeah, so we shall uh, be into game just a second. There's some readies. There's some more readies. Yes. We will be there. One thing I want to bring up. Did I say specifically the in interesting champion pools? I have absolutely no idea what is going to come out of Romulus. From his OPGG, at least, the man plays a whole bunch of picks that you wouldn't normally see in the mid lane. And, oh, I can breathe a sigh of release of as I have uh, hawked rubbish for long enough, Black Block, so we are into champion select. 
Here we go. Let's see what the ban priority here is. We're expecting to see a Velkos ban possibly from the side of Destiny Rebellion. The Vi Sports may surprise us though with what they're banning as nobody's really been spamming only one champion from the side of Divide Esports. So the, the Swain takeaway, that's something that Fornic does play quite a bit, so there is a bit of a target ban priority coming out. There and goes the Udir. Yeah, we, we expected this. Yeah, nothing surprising so far. The support Swain was played a lot out of Fornic, so it is unsurprising that they don't want to deal with that support Swain being quite strong in the meta and just very annoying to deal with. And obviously the Udir, nobody's surprised by that. It's been in the meta long enough. Everybody knows about the Flash Bear Slap. Nobody wants to deal with it. All right, Nocturne takeaway here. This is one of the many uh, odd champions that we have seen Romulus play, and actually probably one of the less odd compared to some of his OPGGs for the mid lane. He's been playing a lot it's, of Talia uh, in the jungle, which we haven't seen for multiple seasons, so no clue what he's going to pull out. Yeah, there's a little prior on her uh, the, near to the end of last season, if I recall. Seraphine is going to be taken away. That's going to be one of the non-Velkos picks for Inexu, and... Uh, I was going to say that she was recently buffed, but that's 11-11 where there's buffs to the Moonstaff combo and to Seraphine herself. So just a just a comfort pick, uh, comf yeah, comfort pick taken away. The Morgana ban is interesting considering that Inexu does play a lot of the Morgana himself. Obviously not interested in dealing with it, knows how strong it can be. And the Seraphine ban, I'd say that's a very smart ban. It's one of the few champions that Inexu played that wasn't actually a just a mage champion, one of the few actual supports, so taking that away, really limiting the champion pool of Inexu. And the last ban in the first rotation is going to be the Oriana, very much the comfort pick for Skarjan in the mid lane for Divide Esports. Got, I think, over double the games played on that champion than anything else. It's also a great one to take away for competitive, as we all know. The Oriana is a great competitive pick. So the Tristana first pick, now that is interesting. So Waffles has been playing some. There's also been some of that played mid lane out of Skagent, so not entirely sure. This may be a flex pick. Flex City, I'm all about it. Really do like to see it. Just waiting on the Destiny Rebellion to take their first pick. Now, chances are, I think, from what I've gathered speaking to Robman, we will look he will look to try and get counter pick, and obviously being on red side, he has that uh, opportunity. The rumble will be picked up, but do not be fooled. That will almost certainly be going to Haywire in the jungle. Absolutely, and as we all know, the rumble is seriously strong right now. With the buff to his flame flora, rumble in the jungle can do so much damage and can clear so efficiently. He really is not the ideal ganking champion. He only has a slow for CC, but when he gets that ultimate, he can just lay down the pain onto anybody and really cut off escape routes and trap people in corridors, which can be exceptionally useful when you're trying to go for the objectives. Yeah, the zone control from the Equalizer is absolutely fantastic, and the Kaiser will be picked up as the uh, pick for Kamek Soul in the ADC position for uh, Destiny Rebellion. The support pickup is going to be taken now for Inexu, and this is interesting. He hasn't been known to play tanks very much, and yet here we see the Nautilus. It's one of the few engaged supports that he actually plays. Obviously, Nautilus is not exactly the most mechanically demanding of all champions, so it does make sense that this would be the one that he would choose to pick up, the Diana. So we are going to get a high damage matchup in the jungle and two big tank supports in the bot lane. Some pretty standard comps for this point ten patch. Nothing too surprising as of right now. Yep, the Alistair will be the last pick uh, taken, so we will see both of the bot lanes here, Tristana Nautilus versus Kaiser Alistair, both kind of looking to do the same thing. The early advantage will be on the blue side, however, as Tristana and Nautilus can really lay down the pain early on. If you catch someone with the Nautilus hook, the Tristana has all the ways to get in onto that fight and no need to be caught out unawares. The Kaiser, obviously not that unsafe with her ability to run away in some invisibility once she's leveled it up, but yeah, the early advantage definitely with the side of Divide Esports. And looking the into the Darius second fan. 
yeah, I was going to say, second phase, there's a lot of top lane priority coming out here. The Fiora is banned away from Terra, his most played top laner by uh, quite a margin. So we'll see what happens. I'm interested to see if we continue with this trend or if we maybe look towards a couple of mid lane focus bans. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some more top lane bans. A lot of these top laners really like to play some more carry carry top laners and another Malphite ban so we really are doubling down. Top laners you do not get to play any fun champions. The Orn is one champion that they both share so we'll see if that there's any priority on that or if Divide Esports are just going to choose to ban it out right here. They certainly could. Very interesting to see. It depends on how damage heavy they go with the rest of the comp obviously the Lee Sin ban actually coming out which is interesting obviously it is a strong top lane pick at the moment although Haywire has shown that he can play the Lee Sin he's played it over this season in solo queue a bit chances are though yeah more likely than not would go into one of his solo laners with the rumble that could have been a flex pick if they had taken the Lee Sin so it makes sense for Divide Esports to want to get rid of it Destiny Rebellion gonna take themselves the set very strong top laner, great engage, pairs very well with the Alistair and with the Kaiser, who wants to be able to get in on that. When they lay down the Rumble ulti on top of that, there is a lot of CC to lock people down and burn straight through them. I am liking this comp. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see as well if Robman can get good flank positions. If you can really get a showstopper, pull someone out of their team. That's just a basically a free pick. Orn will be taken, as you, uh, as you said, still available, will be taken for Terror, which means is fairly safe top laner you can just chill farm Orn does not scale with gold he scales with levels he scales with completed items which granted do take gold but that's something that happens pretty inevitably over the course of the game it's always going to be useful with those ornaments how far behind you fall as an Orn, you are always going to be able to put that ram in always going to be able to knock people up a very useful pick paired with the vein mid lane I think the Tristana will be mid. I think, yeah, we, I think we're seeing a vein. I think we're seeing a vein Nautilus, which means that Tristana. They now well, now Destiny Rebellion know that there's a Tristana mid, so they can try and play into that or play, you know, specifically spec against that. Galio could be the pick. Usually, you pick them against very magic damage heavy mid lanes. However, obviously, very tanky with the taunt means that you can't really go all in safely. Will be the Galio mid then? Yeah. This is an interesting composition. I'm definitely leaning in favour of the Destiny Rebellion on this team comp. I like the amount of CC that they have to lock people down within the Rumble ulti and for the Kaiser to deal massive amounts of damage. They do have options on the side of Divide Esports, but the double ADC pick into. A lot of tanks does make sense. Vayne into tanks is obviously fantastic, but I'm not sure about how well they're going to fare with such squishy champions in the middle and not uh, yeah I'm not sure it's the far harder to execute comp for sure absolutely is obviously with with two kraken slayers the tanks will still melt fairly quickly but if Robman goes in with the showstopper Romulus can follow up with the hero's entrance that's a really, really strong setup combo. And then you're just leaving Fornic to basically play as Keepy out. Just there to peel for the Kaiser and for the Rumble, who are going to be your big team damage dealers. The Galio obviously can go either quite tanky or very AP heavy. I'd imagine very AP heavy. They've already got two big tanks in the top lane and in the support role. It I think. It really depends on whether Rob wants to go for the more aggressive focused set builds because obviously there are there are builds where you're going blade of the ruin king gore drinker on set or more than likely stride breaker a very very good pick for set to try and get into positions for the showstoppers just preferring the destiny rebellion comp overall a lot easier to execute but i think everybody has a lot of opportunities to get in on this which lanes do you think we're gonna see early action with i'm hoping to see Waffles and Inexu, obviously Vayne not quite as strong in the early game as a Tristana, but if they can hit the level 2 first and uh, Waffles can get Silver Bolts, then they can really put the pain down onto uh, their opposing numbers, especially if Al the Alistair is still level 1. Basically doesn't really exist as a champion until he hits level 2. And not really being 
particularly good at his job of locking carries down until the level 3, so the early level's definitely in favour of Divide Esports. The top lane matchup should be, well, a bit of a wet kipper fight, if I'm honest. The Sept can obviously do a lot of damage. The Orn can also do a lot of damage early game. He does come with some pretty insane base stats, but um, it is unlikely that we're going to see Solar kills top lane unless anybody makes a big mistake. Yeah. Same possibly with the mid lane matchup, unless Skagent decides to rocket jump directly into the face of the Galio, should be far enough away that nobody should be dying too early on in this lane. Yeah, and the Galio CC is generally telegraphed enough that you should be able to uh, buffer the rocket jump to get to safety if that comes out. Both the junglers are going to be pretty quick farming. I do like, I think Toby Watt is going to be the one with greater lane presence early. Obviously, Rumble can just hard clear the jungle until the cows come home, but Diana really can do some very nasty damage. And of course, the lockdown with her ultimate when she hits the level six mark will set up for uh, some very, very good damage if her teammates can layer with it. Yeah, the Tristana should be able to jump in with the Diana if... You know, if Skagent is really feeling himself, it's not always the best idea to rocket jump directly into the face of your opponent, but if you're feeling it, we've seen plenty of players do this before in these tournaments, and it always makes for interesting team fights. Good team fights, perhaps not, but interesting, most definitely. Well, who dares wins? If there's someone low and you can, you're confident that you can get in and get the reset, then absolutely go for it, my guy. I always love to see it when players are willing to, you know, make that leap. No pun intended, <laughs> to try and really get into their opponent's faces. So, just loading on into game now? Yeah, just looking at the uh, not summoners, the rune choices, generally not too surprising across the board. There is a hail of blades for the set. That is actually going to be quite big when it comes to early game trading. He'll be able to do a lot of damage into the Orn before he gets super armor stacks. This may also indicate that the set is planning on going a more carry-oriented build, and perhaps the Galio, with the Aftershock, will be going for a tankier build. Because Galio, when he wants to go AP, tends to go with more of the sorcery runes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Looks looks like we are about to get onto Summoner's Rift. There we are. Welcome to the Rift. Game 1 between Divide Esports and the Destiny Rebellion. Put it in. I see that there's a, uh, a prediction going on in Twitch chat. Who is going to take first blood, the first kill of the season? Spend your points. I want to see your commitments in that chat. If I were a betting man, I'd probably be putting my gold onto the bot lanes dying first. It's a pretty volatile matchup. The Vayne Definitely. and the Nautilus want to get early kills. Very aggressive minded. Yeah, and looking at the summoners, we see that there is a double... I was going to say double offensive summoner in the Destiny Rebellion bot lane. There's an exhaust and an ignite, whereas Sir Waffles has the more traditional heal on the vein. Yeah, that is... Yeah, that definitely tells me that this bot lane is looking to get into a Barney, which is very interesting. A little bit of a invade, possibly? Just getting some vision out of the side of the Destiny Rebellion. Making sure they yeah. know where everybody is. Pretty standard lane starts. Nobody's looking to really too much into it in the first game of the season. Yeah, we will see people taking, yeah, fairly standard lines of scrimmage. Obviously, wards have been put down. It looks like the, the first big divergence, Toby Watt going to be playing red buff, clearing towards the top side. Haywire starting leashless on the red buff on the top side. Now, this is really important. Haywire is not spotted by anybody on the side of Divide Esports. They don't know where he started, so he can really full clear and pop up in any lane that he so chooses. He'll probably be pathing towards the bot side from that red side camp start, but nobody is going to know where he is. Whereas, because Toby Watt took a leash from the bot side, they know where he started. They know he's on the red side. And for that, Rob Man can be a little bit careful around the 2 minute 40 mark, 3 minute mark for an early gank. It certainly is. Standard clears as it stands right now. Hook landing straight on Kamek Soul on the bot lane. And then you see the early damage coming through. The press the attack for the vein, even at level one, doing considerable damage to Kamek Soul. A trade also in the mid lane. 
Romulus has already been taken down to half HP, which is not a good start, not where near against a Hail of Blades Ignite Tristana. Perhaps we were wrong in thinking that this lane wouldn't be full of fireworks. Well, Tristana certainly wants to bring them. We can see the early push in for Rodman, a little bit of uh, slapping back and forth. And right now, we can see, I think this is basically how the early lanes will play out. We can see Rodman going to be trying to push in early. That's probably why Toby Watt is trying to path towards the top side, possibly punish the very aggressive play from this set early in the game. We actually see that Kamek Soul and Fornic are the ones who get the early push in this bot lane. Obviously, with the Akathian rain, Kaiser can push the wave quite quickly. The Rumble now down to bot side. It's unlikely the Rumble's going to get any early ganks off. A little bit of a trade in the top side. Terra going in. That's the knock up. Yeah, Terra is just going to try and chase down onto Rodman. Flash is obviously available for the set, but if they can get that burned as early as possible, there it is. Early resources burned, and this could just like very easily be a reset. The top side scuttle is free and available for Toby Watt to take. A little bit of a misplay coming out of Rodman. He had it warded, but he was just too far pushed up for that ward line to really mean anything. If he wanted to be safe there, he needed to push that ward further into the jungle to spot that Diana out before it was too late. As it stands, he had to flash, otherwise he definitely would have died there, especially after he burns all of his summoners, all of his abilities on the wave. Yeah, he had no cooldowns available that time, which is probably why he felt the need to flash. We actually see aggression on the bot lane. Haywire is here in the tri bush. A trade going on in the top lane as well. And oh look, we see Toby Watt is recycling this top lane, and there is no way out for Rob Man. Has already burnt the Haymaker and will go down first blood to Terra. Oh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, more and more aggression. The explosive charge will deal a big chunk of damage to Romulus, and he's just being shoved back off the wave. This ranged versus melee matchup really, really paying dividends. Robman also forced to burn his TP to get back into lane, otherwise he was going to miss a lot. <laughs> Another aggressive trade forward. There is the Ignite. Scargent will get the solo kill. I actually thought he might be able to get out, but the Romulus flash is just too late. Engage coming in on the bot side. He gets pushed under the tower. Fornic is going to be dropped very low. Here's the teleport coming in. This should be Terra coming to try and clean this one up. Kamek Souls tries to flash away, but is not able to do so. Will get taken down by Sir Waffles. And another kill picked up for Terra with the teleport play. Four kills to zero at the five minute mark. 2k gold in the lead. What a misplay out of multiple members from Divide Esports. Multiple members from Divide Esports have pushed up way too far in their lanes, over-aggression being punished left, right, and center. Fornic thought he'd had a brilliant engage, but instead it was a massive bait. The TP coming in from Terra, and this play is turned around, and wow. Divide Esports are very far ahead. A full 2k ahead, uh, only five minutes into the game. Certainly are, but does mean that a couple of open plates will be profited from by Rob Man, try and make up the gold that was lost, obviously, when he was forced out of the lane, not once, but twice. And the lane states continue. I'm very interested to see who spreads their focus across the map. The Drake is obviously up. It is an ocean Drake, which means that... Uh, some people might be a little bit sad. Later in the game, obviously, the Ocean Soul is a massive boon to have. It would especially be a boon for the side of the, the Destiny Rebellion. Got lots of tanks who want to be getting their health back. Although both sides would probably profit. Nobody seems particularly interested in fighting around it. And after the way that that early game has gone, I doubt the Destiny Rebellion are going to be particularly interested in getting any more fights. They weren't... Fanta they were good responses from Divide Esports, obviously, but it was over-aggression coming out of Div Destiny Rebellion. Oh, speaking of over-aggression here, Terra is completely out of position. Level 6 picked up for Romulus, and there is no nice escape. Oh, I stand corrected. He flashes the wall and gets out to safety. He should not be allowed to get away with that. What a fantastic outplay by Terra. That was really nice. He was completely out of position, way too pushed up but he just made the enemy team blow a lot of summoner spells and gets away scot-free. He even allows his team to take the first Drake for free. Second one coming up, obviously, in just under five minutes will be the Infernal Drake. And we can see Romulus was able to was able to go out, going to go forward, actually, here. But there it is. The buffering on the rocket jump means that 
Skarjan is completely safe from Haywire, who is trying to come in for the gank. And this early game just goes from bad to, from bad to worse for Destiny Rebellion. It's landing. And that's as simple as it needs to be. You just land the Silver Bolts procs, big chunks of percent health, Kobe, what is he damage. Probably not going to be able to get away with anything. There was a ward there. They will respectfully step all the way back to their tower. If we look at warding, the bottom side is just lit up for Divide Esports. Blue side has got wards everywhere. Obviously, this one's about to be cleared up by Camisol, but the bot side is very, very safe. So Waffles and Nexu are not looking like they're going to get killed anytime soon. Whereas it's a lot darker for the side of the Destiny Rebellion, which is quite scary. Ooh, Haywire actually hanging out towards the bot side here, not spotted out by the Scryer's Bloom. Terra will pick up a plate to himself. And the state... Lane state sort of reaches that status quo once again. Still around a K advantage. A little Rob bit Man of trading in coming up. from Robman. Yep, it looks like Terra is just going to do what he can to step away. Haywire still hanging around this bot side, which... You don't need to be here. There's no objective to take. The Herald is up as well. The most important thing for that Rumble is just getting farmed up so his ulti can do the most amount of damage. Skagen going in. Skagen being so aggressive here can absolutely decimate this Galio early on. He's got two amp tomes. He's not even respecting the damage that can come out from the Tristana. Oops. What's here in the bot lane as well? The try and go in immediately gets knocked out by the headbutt, though. Nicely done by Fornek to prevent even further aggression. I really, really, really want to see Divide look towards topside, though. Get this Herald picked up. That's so much free plate gold that they can uh, that they can put down if they're able to. Nope. Rodman going for even more aggression. The Bellows breath actually stops the show uh, showstopper. Fantastic from Terra there. Terra is showing some true mastery of this Ornn with that lovely flash out earlier and now beautiful buffering to make sure that he does not get taken out by the showstopper. That was really nice. Absolutely was. Just shy of 10 minutes. The gold lead sits around 2.5k right now. Haywire coming in towards the mid lane. I don't think we're going to see a dive here. Haywire actually hanging around behind the uh, blue side tower. Looked like he was trying to get a cheeky... Sh uh, Equalize it down, but will not be able to manage that. Instead, going to resolve to go towards this Herald. Obviously, got four more minutes left while plates are up, so going to use that. Probably mid is where you'd expect it to go. Maybe top if they want to just crack that tower and allow Robman to move around the map. Hopefully, try to find some kills and equalize the gold that has spiraled quite dramatically out of control for them. It's stayed at around 2k, but that is still quite a lot for only 10 minutes into the game. Very true. I would, I think personally, my preference would be just get that top lane tower gone because it can be removed. And they're going to look for a dive here as well, it seems. Robman trying to get onto Terra here. I think he knows that he needs to just completely get out of dodge here. <laughs> but they're set up. Haywire is completely there. The knockup comes through as well. Yeah, there is no way out for Terra here. He will go down. Tries to use the Ornhorn, horn, but it does get shut out. He gets taken down, shut down, going to Haywire. And Shelly will indeed be dropped, taking down the first power of the game for the Destiny Rebellion. The bot lane of Divide Esports looking to trade something back, getting a few turret platings of their own. But that is a tower cracked for Destiny Rebellion, which is nice. And the kill on top of that, looking to get their way back into this game. It's not out of their reach. They do have some fantastic scaling on Haywire, on Kamixol. These champions really are going to be very good in the late game. It was a nice play top lane. As much as Terra has shown fancy feet throughout this game, there was nothing he could do in that one. Oh, Rodman's going to catch out Toby White as he finds himself in damage? the jungle. Absolutely <laughs> decimates. The flash does manage to get out. The knockup does not come through from Terra here. Rodman does have the flash available, so should be able to punish. There is the Ornhorn. Horn. There's the flash away, but it lands all the same. There is Skarjan. First here to arrive, and the Romulus tries to use the hero's entrance for the save, but is not going to manage it. Double kill picked up for Skarjan. 4 and 0 oh on the Tristana with the Gale Force completed already. On it going in. Oh, even further aggression. Like, it looks like Sir Waffles will fall down here. Teleport coming through. It's a two versus two at the moment right now. The teleport immediately forced to run away. A bit of a waste of that cooldown since Rodman does still have it available. That was a really nice little pick coming out of Fornic. Just ran straight forwards, grabbed it. Very nice play. Rodman looking like he might want to go in onto Skagen. 
It's got a hell of a lot of damage here. Haywire is here too. There is Romulus as well. They try for the dive, but they cannot get onto him. It does look like Toby Watt will fall, but he takes down Haywire first. This fight's just going to keep going. <laughs> and here comes Inexu. There is the knockup. Will the damage come through? The, hay the Haymaker is not there. Robman will fall to Inexu. And the push will keep on coming in the mid lane. Nope, they're going to change their mind. They're going to turn their priority towards their second Drake of the game. This game is still going very well for Divide Esports. They're stacking Drakes. They got an early Drake and now they're stacking their second one. And if we look at the score lines and the items, this Tristana is massive. Oh, good catch on towards Kamek Soul. The aggression is going to come back through, though. They're trying to catch on to the major damage dealers, but the only person that gets caught is Inexu. They're going to keep trying to step forwards, but Terror is getting a little bit low. It looks like the call is made to back off. The really nice little fight that they found there. I'm not entirely sure why the Destiny Rebellion felt the need to go in. They did get a nice catch onto Inexu, but it wasn't really worth it. They end up trading one for one and losing the Drake. They probably could have made more sense to have pushed out their lanes elsewhere, maybe got a push mid to try to get a few plates off of that mid lane, rather than running in and losing out on fights where they have no business winning when they're against a 4-0 and 3 Tristana with Gale Force, with Berserker's Greaves, who is just going to shred through. No amount of armor is going to do anything to them. Oh, they're trying to get the aggression here onto Rodman here. He was trying to hard push. It's going to get knocked up, shot up, and shot to pieces. Terra takes the kill. Wow. This Tristana and this Orn are both huge, which is a massive, massive problem for the Destiny Rebellion. Their carries are getting shredded. Well, Haywire tries to come in towards the mid lane. They're going to try and aggress onto Skargent here. The Gale Force will get him out of reach of the Equalizer. That is not a fair item, I'd say, on a Tristana who already gets a rocket jump and then gets to jump and away. And resets for days. Bornick is the next target. We see Final Hour is going to be used by Sir Waffles. There is no escape here. Will get given over to the Vayne. And despite Skargent being pretty low, still going to hard commit on towards Romulus. There is absolutely no damage to speak of. Did get the uh, Blake and Steel Caps, but that is not going to mean a damn against a 4-kill Tristana. Meanwhile, Toby One trying to go aggressive into the enemy jungle is going to be punished for it as Kamek Sol picks that one up. The Blast Cone sends him in completely the wrong direction. Maybe a little bit of overaggression bred out of complacency because this game is going well for Divide Esports. You can't really blame Toby Watt for wanting to punish even further, try to starve Haywire out of his own jungle. These plays really just keep exploding in the favor of Divide Esports, you can't step in the same lane as Skagent right now, and he, otherwise he is just going to shred through you, just make your life miserable. They have let this Tristana get completely out of control. Yeah, and with 15 minutes on the board, a couple of minutes for the next Drake, absolutely Divide can just chill and wait for a 22 minute soul win condition. They are in no hurry for this game, especially not with an Orn on their team. Ornaments coming in at level a vein 14 as well. and a vein. The infinite scaling. They, they're they in a pretty happy spot. The issue comes for the Destiny Rebellion, who need to do something, but I'm not entirely sure what they can do at this point. Their Galio is basically useless. Their Rumble does some damage, and their Kaiser also, but not enough when compared to the massive tank items that have already come out of Terra, that have already come out for Inexu. Yeah, it, it, unless Robman, who is 0-4 by the way, can get some kind of extremely mad blank and pull a, a key member out, like Skagent, maybe lock him up long enough to take him down, I don't see Destiny Rebellion in a position to take a fight, let alone win it. No, and scaling is not on their side. They scale well, but they don't scale any better than the side of Divide Esports. This game might be a little far gone. Well, I'll have to see. Destiny Rebellion are going to continue trying to be proactive. They go for the second Herald. Obviously, they did take the first and use it to break open the top lane. While this happens, <laughs> Terra is going to use the Ornhorn to slow the play down, but there is no way it's going to be contested properly. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Kamek's soul going to be completely forced off by the fact that his support was not present. It was at least a good trade for the Destiny Rebellion. They were never going to get in on that fight. 
There was no point in them even trying. They would have all died to this Tristana. They would have just fed her reset after reset. So taking that trade, getting that bot lane push in, taking down that tower, that is a nice play. That is one way they can come in. Just always trading something. Even if it's not going entirely in their favor, just making sure that they don't keep compounding their losses. That's something we see a lot from these lower level teams, especially in the Platinum League. They'll see things start to go wrong and they'll compound their losses. They'll keep making things worse. So it's nice to see the Destiny of Rebellion having a little bit of restraint and not making things worse for themselves. Definitely, yeah. They're still getting plays uh, or still, you know, taking objectives across the map. Tower goes down, they take the Herald, and they will use Shelly to crash into this mid lane tower. And with Shelly being there, they can set up for positioning on the Drake. This is really, really nice macro play from the Destiny Rebellion here. If they can take this Drake uncontested, that delays this uh, Soul Win Con by five minutes. They take it quite quickly with the Kaiser, and it is taken down out. Down it goes. There is the ultimate coming in. Taken down, Kirby Watts ultimate does not go off. This is actually a fight looking pretty good for the Destiny Rebellion. Trying to get onto Skagen here. Uh, Robman does do a lot of damage, but is not quite able to take him down. There comes the Ornhorn. There is the turnaround, but it's so chaotic across the map. Haywire survives with but a fragment of health. Kamixol will get the shutdown onto uh, Terra. And Skagen survives with a sliver. Three members go down, traded for only Robman, and the uh, dragon is taken down by Destiny Rebellion as well. Really good fight, really well taken. What a team fight from the Destiny Rebellion. Down multiple thousands of gold, and yet they come through in that team fight. It looks like Terra might be able to carry the fight through. He got a massive Ornhorn knockup, but it was not to be. Kamixol doing so much damage in that team fight, along with Haywire, and Robman just zoning off the carries, making sure that nobody could just sit still and auto attack. If you allow the Vayne and if you allow the Tristana to just sit there and auto attack, you are never going to win fights. But Robman played that fight fantastically. He did give his life for it, but he zoned people off. And we saw a little bit of over-aggression for Toby Watt. He went leaping in, and he is not tanky. He has sorcery boots. Ooh, Skagen going in. He's trying to go on to Robman here. Huge damage actually coming out from the set. Absolutely decimates, and the huge shutdown going on to the set. And the question mark pings to top it all off. Robman, he had a nasty time in the early game. Played a little bit over-aggressive, but now he is doing a lot of damage. The Blade of the Ruin King build for the set leaves him quite squishy, but with his Showmaker, he does not die so fast and is able to go for these more aggressive builds, and it seems to be working out for them quite well. Looking like it, they are evening it back up. Still 2.5k uh, gold in the disadvantage. There's two towers to two. Robman is going to keep on shoving this top lane down, hoping to take objectives wherever he can. I like that Haywire and Fornic playing to kind of cover for Robman here. There's the rotation coming through. And it's says, warding. thank you, next. Leaves out towards the top. Robman is really impressing me in this mid game. He's transitioned what was a little bit of a disadvantage into a nice little lead for himself. He's obviously not got the kills, but he stayed even in farm. Toby, what might be Prime. in trouble here? Oh. This ain't no 1v1, son. He will still trade back. He's going to actually fight back onto Skagen here. Could take the 2v1. No, he will not. Skagen will get the kill here. But picking up a kill in a 2v1 situation and forcing summoners. The ignite was burned by Skagen there. Yeah, time to worry about the set. If they try that play again, it's not going to work. The ignite took a lot of healing away from the set that he gets from the Blade of the Rune King and that he gets inbuilt within his kit and he has now finished his Stride Breaker. There it is. That is a massive problem. For the side of the Destiny Rebellion, they can take him and they can put him in top lane and they can ignore him. And unless the Divide Esports spend multiple members, they're not going to be able to deal with him. And as such, the rest of the team can make plays elsewhere around the map, maybe break that tier one tower down in the bot side. Yeah, and right now, Early game was all about divide. Mid game is looking like destiny focused. 90 seconds on the next Drake. This is going to be the next big focal point on the map block. So what do you think is... Uh, how do you think these teams set up for it? I think the important thing is... You need to allow your AD carries, both the mid lane one and the one in the bot lane, three time to hit on Divide Esports, so you need good vision setup. You can see they've got plenty of control wards throughout their own jungle, but they need to push that vision line up. 
into the enemy jungle so they can see where people are coming. Because if Robman or Fornic could get a massive flank off, they're going to be able to bring that Galio straight down onto their backline and not allow their carriers to just sit there and auto attack. And as much gold as you put on a Tristana, as much gold as you put on a Vayne, if they aren't auto attacking, they're not going to do any damage. Absolutely, and we saw that in the last Drake fight. They had to walk in pretty much blind after the Drake had already gone down, and they were just zoned back. They spent more time kiting than hitting. I'm looking at Toby Watt as well to execute on oh. this fight better. Robman looking for the aggression. Never mind, Terror is completely out on a limb. Four members of the Destiny Rebellion show up. There's a flank in from Romulus. This is very nice, but I don't see... Never mind, actually. Absolutely destroying Toby Watt. Great use of the equalizer. Keeping him locked in there. They will suffice for taking down uh, Anexu Ooh, as well. Jason is trying to get safety. Buster shot was very nice. Let's see if they can keep running towards the top side. They will be able to get out to safety. But this is another Drake picked up basically for free. Thanks to some good warding and some good shot calling from the Destiny Rebellion. To start that fight off, Terra had no business being that pushed up with no good warding behind him. He was almost pushed all the way up to the tier 1 tower, and that meant he was always going to die there. Oh, man with the catch onto Sir Waffles. The final hour was huge, though, as it did not allow Robman to get the showstopper off. Romulus may well pay the price here. Obviously, Avain is going to chunk no matter what goes on. This is an just overstay coming out. Yeah, a lot of just huge overstay. They tried to play two places on the map at once. Three members go down and immediately the call is being made. Divide, push towards the Baron. And this should go down pretty darn quickly. Tristana Vane do a lot of damage. They, uh, Neither of them actually have Kraken Slayer this game, which interests me. I do like the shield bow pickup though for the Vane. It allows her to be obviously a bit safer when people are constantly trying to dive. KY is on a ward. That Blast Cone is going to get taken out. I next to trying to come up. Ooh. Will get taken down. The follow-up, it looked like probably what was looking for it, but the call is made. They will not go for that. Be happy with the three kills and the Baron they pick up. That power play. Uh, we'll see how it can work out. Obviously, they're still like four and a half K gold in the lead. Stands, I think they should probably send the Tristana top lane two or three members mid and two or one member bot lane because the Tristana will be safe enough and they are just getting out team fought whenever they try to run in to the middle of all of the Destiny Rebellion. So if they just ah. split push, their individual members are a lot stronger. They have the Baron. You, you know what I see there though, Bloxer? What do you see? In the inventory of Toby Watt, that is a stopwatch. Exactly Finally. what a Diana needs to do huge damage with her ult in team fights. If she can get in, drop the Moonfall, hit the stopwatch, then the enemy team could melt beneath, beneath her onslaught. I mean, there is basically no magic resist built across their entire team. Nice hook. Ooh, he finds on the Kamek Soul, manages to get out. The hero's entrance is gonna do some really, really good zoning. Uh, Toby Watt will be able to get that kill, but they will not be allowed to escape. The follow-up is huge, though. Both AD carries free hitting, as you say. Skagen is going to go over the base wall. Fornic, you are not safe, my friend. Explosive charge will take that one down. Then a cheeky little hop will be able to take them out of the base and onto this inhibitor turret. Two cannon minions there. This tower is going to melt. Yeah, with a Tristana, with a Vayne, and with the Baron buff empowered minions, they might well lose the game right now. A nice little Ooh. flash for Fornic. A needed one. I don't oh, know if this is going to be enough, though. Four right. members are here. Haywire does not do damage. His Sonya's is down. There is the takedown. And yeah, Divide Esports will walk their way into the end of game one. Skagen trying to go for Kamek Soul will not be allowed to get that. But yeah, the game ending quite quickly really of course after that over aggression in the bot lane or uh, in the mid lane rather sorry as uh destiny rebellion were trying to push two objectives simultaneously taking the drake and pushing the mid lane huge punish comes out divide get the baron get the pressure and then when they set up fights themselves skagen so waffles free hitting
a little bit of a wobble during that mid lane, uh, mid game. I was very impressed with the Destiny Rebellion's ability to team fight. So it will be interesting coming into the next game to see whether or not the Destiny Rebellion can not lose out massively in the early game to over aggression on their part, and if they can then transition that into not even being ahead coming into the mid game, but just being somewhat even coming into the mid game. They probably will be able to out team fight, divide esports, divide esports team fights were not looking good, whereas the Destiny Rebellions were looking great. So if they can come in with an even gold during that mid game, they could be in a really nice spot for game two. But as it stands, that was a good early game from Divide Esports. Little wobble in the middle, but they're able to transition that into a fantastic win to start their league off in the right way. Yeah, they are one game up. We will take a quick break. We will be back soon enough to see if Divide Esports can capitalize on their game one win or if the Destiny Rebellion will fight and fight to the end. And welcome back, everybody. About to get into game two, but first and foremost, I need to do a, a little bit of a plug to our Vertigear affiliation, link below the stream, and socials a little bit further, you know, over towards Black Boxer kind of way. Right there, as you can see, hopefully. Lovely. All right. Nice little bit of uh, bookkeeping done. Let's get ourselves ready for game two. Remind us, Bloxer, what happened in game one? Draft if? Possibly. Draft if is maybe the culprit. The early game from Divide Esports was fantastic. Destiny Rebellion kept over pushing and Divide Esports were fantastic at punishing them for anything. Then the mid game rolled around and Divide Esports were terrible. They lost out on some big team fights where Robman really found some good flanks and managed to keep them honest, even with a massive gold disadvantage. Into the late game, though, finally, Divide Esports come back for the win, but that mid-game was a big problem for Divide Esports. If they don't clean that up and Destiny Rebellion come into the mid-game without being, like, 3k gold down, they may be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, first band comes through, and it's an interesting one. They take away the Diana, which I don't want to be cruel to how Toby Watt played it. It wasn't one of the biggest reasons that that game was won by Divide. No. Toby Watt... I'll, I'll give you a little rundown of what Toby Watt did in case you missed the early game. He ran in, he died, and then his team won the fight around him. So, I'm not sure about that Diana ban, if I'm honest. Yeah, we will see, however. Uh, the Rumble is going to be taken away. The Udyr as well. So, big jungle priority on these Phase 1 bans. Interesting decision, if I'm honest, because the rumble, I mean, it was fine, and the Diana wasn't great, so I'm not sure why they are choosing to put so much priority onto the jungle when really it was the laner's individual skill gaps that managed to pull the win for Divide Esports. Uh, yeah, well, the, the first non jungle ban is going to be Fornix Swain. Just again, keeping him honest, it's far and away his most played champion, so we will. Uh... We shall continue onwards. I wouldn't be surprised to see another jungle ban or two, but perhaps they have more focused bans in mind. Maybe the Morgana. The Nunu. As the Nunu. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that is both a focused ban and a jungle ban taken away from Obi Wan, another of his more uh, comfortable picks. The last ban we're looking for coming out for the side of Divide Esports. If it goes with another jungler, then that pool is pinched quite severely for both of these. I'm really not expecting that. Maybe the Orn takeaway, because Terra was good on it. Yeah, it did do great not work that. on that pick. Yeah, so wow. Romulus' Nocturne is the last pick to get it taken really away. It is a big pinch on that jungle pool. Yeah, although I think that I think that definitely is more more push towards the, towards the uh, mid lane, rather. Romulus obviously having played that a lot. Some key things to have slipped through the bands. The Lee Sin top, which we saw banned in the last game. Yep. If somebody wants to pull that out. And the Morgana. The Morgana, the Morgana did slip through the bands, and this is a massive pick on patch ten on patch eleven point ten. Yeah, really great in the jungle, and also could be flexed to bot lane. Fornic does play it, although generally speaking, not what you tend to want to do. It's just known for insane jungle clear speed, great reliable pick setup with the dark binding, and good team fight utility once you have a stopwatch or the Zonyas from the Soul Shackles. Skagent gonna get his hands on that Tristana again. Oh, flex pick. Why well, not? It could be a flex pick if they didn't decide to instantly pick up the Kaiser. I don't like that. The Tristana could be a flex pick. Why would you choose to show off that 
you're not going to do that. They are going to pivot to the Nautilus, but you've shown that you are considering taking a different ADC and putting that just on it in the mid lane. So interesting decision out of the team, but the Nautilus is the pick in the end. Ne Inexu does play it a lot, is very good on it. Yep, did have a, a perfectly reasonable showing on it, landed some very, very good hooks uh, in that game one. And after the long time hover of the Kaiser, it looks like uh, Kamixol will look to pick that one up again. I wouldn't be surprised to see almost an identical bot lane setup. Never mind, it looks like they're going to try and hover. The Orianna did make it through the bans initially. I think it was a phase two ban in, for, in game one, wasn't it? Yes. I'm not surprised by the set hover here. The set was very good out of Robman. He found some fantastic flanks. He only fell behind early because he was too pushed up. So if he can temper that aggression in the early game and come into that mid game not so far behind, he could do a lot of damage. He f got almost out of control in that mid game, was managing to find 2v1s all around. Certainly did. We'll see if they are going to try and keep this uh, Tristana as a flex potential. I don't think an Annie Hopper is going to go anywhere. We'll see what the actual pick is. It will be the Volibear. Interesting. Terra has played that, and it is something that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a set in lane. Absolutely. It's also a flex if you want to put it in the jungle. You don't have yeah, to have it in the top lane. I mean, they could run it support if they were really feeling themselves put the Nautilus jungle, but I'm doubting that one. It is a flex, though. Between the top and jungle, it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the set. In the early game Volibear matchup, I do definitely favor the Volibear versus the set. The set tends to scale later better, um, especially if he goes with the Bork build, but the Volibear not going to be bullied out of lane with that shield, with the Roar of the Thunder. Definitely a strong pick. Interesting that they choose to ban out the Cho'Gath, considering the set has already been picked. Unless they have some kind of plan to put the set onto Fornic, and they're just trying to really pinch Robman's champion pool, so he kind of has to play the set. It is possible, but yeah, a little bit interesting. It's not... We haven't seen Cho'Gath out of Fornic before, unless he's got some old counts we haven't seen before. Oh, it, would, it would be the set for Fornic, yeah. Um, I've lost my train of thought. That was an interesting one. Ah, ban once again. Turns out Terra plays Fiora a lot. Who yes. knew? Who, Who knew? knew? Anybody who's looked at his OP.GG knows. It is just one big long list of Fiora games. He's very good on it. Certainly is. Malphite going to be taken away once again. It looks like both teams are just trying to pinch the champion pools. So Rob, Man, and Terra are both just kind of forced to play the set in the Volibear, you know, keep them honest uh, in a way. Jinx is going to be the final ban. I wonder if they're trying to slightly pinch the AD carry pool there to see if they can force the Tristana onto Waffles rather than in the mid lane. I mean, it was clear that Romulus didn't have the best time uh, playing into that pick. The Aatrox pickup means that this is a Volibear jungle, which I like. I like the Volibear matchup into the Morgana. Morgana won't have a good time if the Volibear decides to invade, and the Aatrox is a very strong pick, although ooh, if Robman does go with that Darius, he is very good on that Darius as well. That would mean it is a set jungle, maybe a set bot lane. Certainly could be. We'll see what is actually locked it in. Is it is going to be various. Okay. So, hyper aggressive early game. If we uh, expect the the average Darius gameplay, flash ghost, try and get you out of lane or dead as early as possible. And Aatrox does have a relatively weak early game. The Darkened Blade is kind of tough to land, especially if someone is ghosting towards you. Yeah. The Darius pickup is. <laughs> In my oh, notes here, what? I have... Ooh. That's a Morgana mid. This? That's a Morgana mid. That is something we were not expecting. The Morgana buffed in the jungle, but the buffs did, I guess, affect all of her AP scaling, so she will do a lot of damage in that mid lane. We're not used to seeing Morgana in the mid lane, though. But chances are this is just kind of a, a nullifying pick. Effectively, you kind of, if it was against the Tristana, you can just farm with Tormented Shadow from half a millennia away and stay safe, prevent the Tristana from going all in on you. If she tries to jump forward, you just dark bind and walk away. It does look like, though, it's going to be Sir Waffles playing the Tristana, and Skagent is going on to the Anivia. Like, second most played champion after the Orianna. 
These team comps are aggressive, especially the team comp out of Destiny Rebellion. One binding hits and you are CC'd for Hold years. Hold up. Look at the champion layout. That's a set mid. It is a set mid. So, it, I wasn't necessarily expecting that. And the Anivia seems a lot smarter now. I was thinking in the mindset of, if this is Morgana mid, Anivia has a bit of a tough time with the Morgana because she can yeah. just black shield the stun. But Set? Unless Set can reliably aggress onto you, which is difficult because of the Flash Frost stun. Yeah, that doesn't seem... This seems like another lane where Romulus is just kind of put in a position where he's not allowed to have any fun. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. They clearly saw that Romulus had a bad time in a melee versus ranged matchup. So why they've put him into another melee versus ranged matchup is a little bit beyond me. Skagen also has the Shard of Ice to throw from far away, a point of click ability. So Romulus is not going to have a good time in this lane. If he can get out of this lane into the team fights, then he has a chance. But I'm not loving this mid lane matchup for them. Not at all. So it, it comes down to, I think, if Haywire can land a dark binding onto Skagen early. And that's about as far as it goes. The Morgana being in the jungle is good. Morgana jungle, very strong on this patch. And Robman, in my notes here, I have is good on Darius written in big letters and underlined. So really, that's where I'm looking. The Aatrox versus Darius matchup, quite a skill matchup, which we like to see. We like to see these big skill matchups. And both Haywire and Toby Watt are on good ganking junglers. The Volley Bear with point and click stun and the Dark Binding, as we all know, binds you up for about a millennium. So if either of these champions come in for a gank, this top lane could be very bloody. Yeah, I'm expecting it to be quite volatile. It's clear, especially for uh, for Robman, that, that he is wanting to carry from that position. And of course, with a strong bot lane as well, Kamixol with the Leona. Leona also a very good pick into the Nautilus. If you try and hook into a Leona in the early game, you're just going to get stunned. And it turns out stuns synergize with Kaisa's kit quite nicely with the plasma stacks. That they do. With Leona, she loves going into hook champions, the Blitzcrank, the Nautilus, and the also the Alistair. Any champion who pulls her in closer, she's like, thank you for the ride, I'm here now, I'm just gonna stun up you, I'm gonna stun up your AD carry. And with the Solar Flare coming down, she can stun up Tristana from quite a way downtown, and Kaisa will be able to leap in, deal a lot of damage. We haven't seen so waffles on this Tristana, we saw how powerful it could be in the hands of Skagen, but Skagen isn't on the champion this time, so we'll see how proficient so waffles is. On this Tristana, this bot lane might be quite bloody. The top lane might be quite bloody, and the bot lane might be quite bloody. Yeah, the only lane that theoretically we shouldn't need to watch is mid lane. The okay, should basically be able to push Romulus in until a jungler shows up, pretty much. Until Haywire, you know, sees fit to grace the lane with his presence. Romulus does not get to play League of Legends this time. He needs to sit under tower and farm because we saw what happened when he tried to play too aggressive last time. It did not go well. So if he sits under tower, farms it up and just chills out, hopefully he can come into this mid game and they'll have a better time because Destiny Rebellion had great team fights last time. I'm looking for them and to stay did. not so aggressive in the early game. Yeah, it looks like if they can get to mid-game, if it, the game plays out uh, any similar to the previous one, that they have the better... Dis well, if they have the setup, then they have the advantage, and they were doing well setting themselves up in advance. And again, we see the Hail of Blades on the set. So unless th this is some kind of hyper-aggressive build for the set, then... I don't necessarily see how that works unless Skagen just completely forgets that Set is a melee champion and doesn't kite at all, ever. Ooh, there's a lot of pings for invades, though. Would be very interesting. Gotta love the little pride banners out the back of Romulus and out the back of Toby Watt. A little bit of fun, a little bit of colour bring to the game. Invade yeah. coming out for the side of Des uh, whoopsie, of yeah. Destiny Rebellion. Yeah, it looks like Sir Waffles should be able to spot this one out, standing up in the river with plenty of space to 
uh, withdraw towards the top side. Robman is going to take the back. Has the ghost, as I suspected, looking to just be as aggressive as possible. Try and get kills early and snowball as quickly as he can. Does not have the TP, so there is a already a TP advantage for the side of Destiny Rebellion. Skagen also has the TP. So if they're looking for any big aggressive plays bot lane, then Terra is going to be able to jump in and Robman is going to be stuck in that top side. Yep. Obviously, if a play doesn't go too badly, then he should be all right. Obviously, he could be able to push in the lane pretty Late darn invade well. for Destiny Rebellion. Yeah, and it looks like this is going to be a straight-up steal onto the blue buff. Completely unscouted as well. If they play this smart, they might even be able to engineer it so that Divide Esports have absolutely no clue that this is going on. And Robman, being super aggressive, completely stack up the hemorrhage, knocking Terra below half health before minions have even crashed. This was a skill matchup, it is not anymore. The lane is pretty much over for Terra, he's lost half of his HP. Obviously, the Aatrox does have quite a lot of health regen, but Robman is now in a great spot to just bully him out throughout the entirety of this early game. Especially with his jungler up top, if Toby Watt wanted to go for a level 2 gank, which the Volley Bear is quite proficient on. Oh, steps up a little bit too far here, is going to be able to use the hook to safety, the plasma doesn't quite proc. Never mind, there is the Void Seeker getting that extra damage off. And Exu dropped below half health and forced back. It looks like they might be absolutely none the wiser of the fact that Haywire has stolen away this blue buff and the Gromp as well. This could be huge if they can continue, or yeah, if, uh, if Divide remain unaware of this. A nice ward placed on that blue buff spot as well. Ooh, oh, hey, Toby. There's the catch. There is the stun. Good damage being put down onto Romulus. The uh, face breaker will do good damage. He is still forced to flash to safety underneath his tower. And if this gets recycled, then he's basically as good as dead. Yeah, that was a really nice early gank. Like we said, the volley bear is a early game oh. ganking beast. Coming down for another one in the bot lane. The hook is available, there's the flash forward, lands on a Kami and Soul, the immediate exhaust comes through, all summoners were burned, but first blood is picked up, the police is on the rift, and Toby Watt puts Divide Esports on the board. What a flash hook coming out of Inexu, that was a lovely play, we really like to see those sorts of things. Toby Watt getting a successful gank off in the mid lane, getting a successful gank off in the bot lane, and he's not feeling so bad about having lost his blue buff. No, he is not. Of course, in the meantime, Haywire farming up an absolute storm. And it is now that I think he finally spots out that his blue buff was taken away. So he will take his wolves and take a back to spend that early 400 gold. Now, this is exactly what we're expecting out of these early game junglers. Toby Watt on the Volley Bear is going to be looking to gank, gank, gank. Whereas Haywire is just looking to farm up and become an absolute CC nightmare in the late game. Certainly it is, and to the Toby with a four-minute balmy cinder. That's uh, that's not something you ever sniff at. Lots of extra damage if he can stay on top of a target, and he's a volley bear. He can stay on top of a target. Especially if you're ganking into a Nautilus lane, or into an Aatrox lane. Lots of knock cups, lots of things that allow you to just stick on your target and get some massive, massive use out of that balmies in the early game. Indeed it is. Coming up towards five minutes, the Drake will be spawning shortly. Despite the first blood, there is a minuscule difference in farm. There is the aggression coming through. Terror is going to be forced to flash here for sure. There is the dash. I like the fact that Haywire held onto the Dark Binding as long as possible. Absolutely ensure that you are forcing the flash out from Terror. He will back, has the teleport of course. And since there is no TP on Robman, the ghost was burned. He will... Uh, he is able to TP back to lane if he wishes. He kind of needs to, actually. The lane is in a really, really unfavorable place for him. Yeah, Robman is able to freeze this top lane if he wants to, um, which would put Terra in a horrible position, having to be that pushed up in a lane when you know that there is a Morgana wandering around. They're trying to take the Drake on the side of Divide Esports right now. They've got the early push out in the bot side, so they'll be able to take this pretty easily. Dark binding over the wall just to sniff it out, but yeah. That was always going to be a good play. Certainly is. 
So, first straight goes down. Right now, looking pretty good for Divide Esports. And Romulus actually doing surprisingly well in this mid lane. Farming up pretty decently, not getting poked out too hard. Obviously, still lacking the flash, but Tobybot has still not decided to uh, visit this top lane again. Robman now having hit level 6, has an extra longsword to his name, and could look to go as ham as he likes. Romulus, ooh, taking a lot of damage, gets hit by that stun. That's a level He's six. unlikely to die right now. Well, he should be able to just is six. The extra damage from the Frostbite does not come through. Romulus is uh, going to try and get away to safety. He should be able to do so. Rodman, there lands the uh, damage. The hemorrhage comes through. There oh, is the Noxian guillotine. Down he goes. I think Fornik is going to be left out to the wolves here. He does manage to save Kamiak's soul but is going to immediately be taken down subsequently. Romulus is actually now trying to engage back onto Skagen. He's a little bit too fast right now. And here's Toby. There is the catch. Knocked down into the egg. Good damage from the Tormented Shadow. And Robman is coming down towards the plate as well. Flashes forward. Haywire will pick up the kill with Elastic from the Tormented Shadow. Inexu is here to try and protect Toby Watt, but he gets hit by a Dark Binding. Another kill picked up. This one for Romulus. And Inexu was next on the board, if not for that hook. Three kills in very, very quick succession picked up for the Destiny Rebellion. Now this is the early game we wanted to see out of Destiny Rebellion, not leaking kills in the early game, actually making proactive plays but not being over aggressive. Actually it was a bit of a overchase from Skagen. We saw just before the top lane solo kill that Skagen had managed to push Romulus out of the lane and he was continuing to chase him for way too long. It gave the Destiny Rebellion plenty of time to see where he was and to make their way over and to catch him out. And then more and more members from Divide Esports came down trying to save him and they just kept dying. They were walking like lemmings to yep. a cliff. <laughs> they certainly were. Eight minutes now is the time. The next Drake to be picked up will be a cloud, which means we're looking at an Infernal or Mountain Soul this game. The gold lead now it's, it's less than a thousand, but it is still a gold lead for the Destiny Rebellion. Romulus, obviously, despite being somewhat bullied in this lane, still farming decently well. Has the Iron Spike Whip to go uh, on towards the Gore Drinker or Stride Breaker of his choice. He's having a much better time of it than he did last game, which he liked to see. Obviously, that last game was the first game of the season. These are brand new teams, brand new groups of players who haven't played together, so it's not surprising particularly surprising that they were feeling feeling everything out trying to find their footing and now this is a much cleaner game from both teams honestly Ooh, big chunk of damage onto romulus does manage to get the haymaker for a little bit of damage back but he is just completely dead here i think toby watt does not commit actually the flash is just burned and they will say i'ma take that Meanwhile, though, Haywire has started off the Rift Herald, and Robman's there to assist. There is a great landing of the Solar Flare onto Sir Waffles. The follow-up damage is not quite there, though. They need to just turn onto Inexu here, I think. Going to do a little bit of damage, but the fact that they didn't switch targets early enough means that they will be punished so for it. Meanwhile, Stone lands on occasion. There is a great use of the Killer Instinct. They cannot chase for Inexu, but Sir Waffles will fall. One for one trade across the map. Fornik has enough health that they could dive this. Looking towards it. Meanwhile, Tobiwa has shown up in the top lane. Rodman was trying to go super aggressive and is immensely punished for it. Terra will pick up the kill. And Haywire has the Eye of the Herald sat upon himself but cannot make use of it right now. I still think that they possibly could have dived Inexu down in the bot side. They'd seen the jungler for the side of Divide Esports top lane, making a play. Why not try for that counter plate? Obviously, it's not so bad that they got a kill and they've got some turret plates, but I would have liked to see a little more aggression. When you know where the enemy jungler is, you can try and go for those plays. The Nautilus is tanky, but not that tanky early game when he only has a pair of mobility boots to his name. Yeah, but it does show that uh, both supports are looking to be very mobile on the map, funnily enough, and uh, try and help lanes not only just sit in close proximity to their carries. If we take a look at items at the moment, nobody's managed to get their fully completed mythics yet. Ooh. Possibly a Barney over the Rift Scuttler. 
<laughs> Romulus is going to be forced to back off here. Haywire is actually here for the assist, though. This is a really great setup, actually, if Romulus can do well. The Haymaker does not do the damage it needs to, and Skagent will pick up this kill. Binding after binding, landing onto the Anivia, though. And the showing of Kamiaxol will be enough to force this team to step away. The Scuttler was eventually picked up by the Destiny Rebellion. Kill, obviously. Uh... I think this is slightly more important in that situation. It was a little bit over aggressive, over aggressive from Romulus, but he was not that far off from. He got a great face breaker. Ooh, Rob Man just missing the pullback. He got a great face breaker, and if his team had managed to follow up with just a little bit more damage, possibly if Rob Man had that TP and he could have got down to that fight, it could have gone a completely different Whoop. direction. Hello, Toby. Toby coming in onto the mid lane. Going to do some decent damage to Romulus, but he will be able to step away. What they're really doing here is just punishing the Rift, uh, the Herald being put down on the mid lane. Haywire is not too sad, though, because they were able to roam down and take that second Drake. The mountains rise. The Mountain Soul will be on the map here. And Exu is actually kind of blocking the uh, Destiny Rebellion bot lane from coming back in. Is going to seed that space. And oh. Borning actually... Gets the first, trying to land the stun on towards Sir Waffles here, but will not manage it. There is the killer instinct forward. There's a dark binding coming out. It is not needed. Fornic picks up the kill. Here comes Toby Watt, though. Is he looking to turn this one There's around? There's a blank no. from Romulus. Oh, does manage to catch on towards Toby Watt here. See if they can try and follow forwards. Dark binding lands, but he will get back to safety near the uh, bot side tower. They've managed to make the Volibear blow his ultimate, so that is one less thing he's going to have when trying to come in for any more ganks. Makes him a lot squishier. That ultimate gives the Volibear a lot of what makes him a tanky champion. After that fight, everybody... It's a lot of one kill, one death, one assist on both teams at the moment. Other than on the side of Skagent, where he's got two kills and is a little bit further ahead. That Anivia... That ult Anivia ulti can do so much damage once the Anivia gets the items. I would not like to be a lot of the immobile champions that are on the side of the Destiny Rebellion caught inside of an Anivia ult. Yeah, and if you can use the Ice Wall properly, then absolutely you can set up for immense damage. Plenty of uh, immobile characters, as you said, that uh, could be, well, I was going to say melted, but, well... Person? The guys does that. Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. Chill. <laughs> Chilled to death. What a way to go. Uh, yeah, at least you were cool when you died. That was terrible. I, I love yes, it. Yes, it was. I do not apologize. Oof, the amount of damage Romulus. that the spike is doing. And there's another frostbite. The cooldown is so low that Romulus is basically just not able to play lane anymore. This is, the, basically, the misery was delayed by about 10 minutes from last game. Yeah, he got to be happy in the early game, but happiness is no more for Romulus. Skagen is sucking all joy out of this mid lane. The Anivia is a notoriously unfun pick to play against, honestly. Haywire is actually in the mid lane right now. Gets caught and takes a hell of a lot of damage. And Robman, a similar situation as we've seen before, just gets completely caught out onto the top side. With the Ghost, will be able to get to safety. Forced to flash as well, though. So no summoners on the Darius for the next few minutes. That means that more plays can be made across the map by Divide Esports. Robman, with a nice little play there, got the double apprehend, which gave him enough time to get some space, get off a Q for a little bit of healing, and run away with the ghost. Had to blow a lot, though. Whoop! There is a flash in. The ultimate will not be used by Toby White. It's not actually up right now. Pardon my French. And Haywire, again, trying to invade, but they're going to try and stack down onto him. No stopwatch available. The Soul Shackles will come through, but there is not enough health on that Morgana. And Romulus is here as well. Gets zoned so nicely by the Ice Wall. There is no escape for the set here. We'll do good damage. We'll get some... Sub uh, da, da, da. Haymaker for some sustain. But, yeah, there's no surviving that. Unfortunately, it tries a little too hard to save the jungler and just ends up being fodder for the Frosts as well. And now because he's dead, Skagent has a nice big pushing wave, has Nexu with him, and they are going to manage to crack this mid lane tower before Haywire manages to get back to lane, which is really nice. Some first tower gold. Um, 
and yes. they managed to stop the Rift Herald charge from coming into their tower earlier in the game, so they are in a there. nice spot there. Yeah, Robman still being incredibly aggressive on the top side. Finally has uh, finished off the Stride Breaker, so Engage is going to be very, very easy for him thanks to the extra movement speed that it gives on auto attack. And we can see Haywire, top side once again, Herald will be the priority. Yeah, we've got one minute on the Drake, 30 seconds now. So they're going to try to take this Rift Herald, possibly take a reset and then run their way down to Drake. For this next big skirmish that may happen around the Drake, let's take a look at the items. The Leandri's Torment finished Force Agent. That burn damage is going to do so much, especially with Swifties. That ult can be up and repositioned very, very often. On the other side, the only mythic item that has been finished is the Stride Breaker on the side of Robman, and he has no TP, so if he wants to get in for this fight on, around the Drake, he's going to need to start running now. And doesn't look like he will be doing that. Haywire trying to maintain vision control in the river, but turns out no one really wants to run into a 3 killer Nivea at this stage of the game. King, really? I've never thought of that. It's just... He, yeah, the Anivia does so much off. damage and can zone you with a wall with the ultimate. Misses the stun onto Romulus, so he's allowed to walk away, but this should be a pretty easy Drake pickup. Yeah, Haywire's going to try and shove out the mid lane. Daggers, the, yeah. Haywire pushes out the mid lane, puts down the Herald. It's actually going to be, you know, supported into the mid lane this time. The hook did come through. Romulus is going to be left out to dry here. He went very, very far forward to try and ensure that the tower went down. Stun does land. Hook does come through, but it goes on to uh, Fornek. <laughs> These frostbites are just doing so much. Skagent is... Skagent is absolutely decimating on this Anivia right now. Four and one. Looks like he is setting himself up to really uh, help carry his team towards this win. Obviously, they can 2 woe this one. Fornik is going to be the target. There is the Stormbringer. And the catch is also there as Haywire does use the Soul Shackles. We'll get a stun or two off. Does go down in the end, however. Toby won not even traded out. The wall is fantastic from Skagen to try and protect him from Romulus. Romulus should be the next... Uh, next to fall. Actually, no, Skagen is the one to fall. Knocked into the egg here. Will not go down, however. Uh, Terra is there to support Ninivia. Now 5-1-2. and two. Without the egg, though, this is the time where they are vulnerable. They do not have a stopwatch. They do not have a Zonius. They do have Flash, but this is the time if you want to kill this Ninivia. This Ninivia is such a problem, and that's when you don't even look at this Tristana, who is also a problem. Skagen, in the last game, in this game, has been a terror. This may be the player to watch for this team. Really has an MVP level performance as of right now. Played the Tristana and bullied Rom Romulus out constantly, and on this Anivia, just terrorizing the Rift. Yes, indeed. 20 minutes closing. I don't think either team is going to be able to go for a 20-minute Baron. Neither team has that kind of uh, shredding ability. And, oh look, I think we've seen this before in the top lane. Robman being forced to use summoners as Tobiwatt shows up to the top side. Oh, never mind, Inexu is here as well. There is not going to be escape for Robman. There is the depth charge. Knocked into the air. Stun, stun, stun. He that healing this, is disgusting, though. He does turn around, and the burn will be enough to take down Toby One. He is playing out of his mind. The healing for the decimates is immense. Will he be able to get another one off? No, he will not. Terra will take that one down. But in a 3v1, Robman finds a kill. That was a beautiful play out of Robman. He should not have been there, however. As much as the outplay was lovely, he was too pushed up, and he did not know where the enemy jungler was he had no business being that pushed up but it did lead to a pretty nice outplay looks like all of the prep we did where we wrote is good on darius was correct cool checks out <laughs> oh okay resetting let's have a look so terra pushing in the top lane haywire will be there to stop the wave crashing or at least to at least profit from the experience that is there. The next objective to be up is a Mountain Drake in just under two minutes. Romulus is, is looking. in a He's pretty looking. bad spot versus that Tristana versus that Nautilus when he doesn't even have a fully completed mythic item. He does not want to step up any further. I think he might be about to die. The Nautilus ult is 
almost up. If he sticks around for another 10 seconds, he's going to die. I respect the respect that Romulus has, though. The fact that he is not actually stepping up to the wave. He's basically just soaking the XP in this situation. Once again, Rodman just hard shoving in this top lane. He wants to take this tower down so that he can be unleashed on the map. So he can actually uh, find more proactive plays all over the map rather than just present. Terra is going to be caught by the Soul Shackles. The Flash nearly gets him out of range, but not quite. The shutdown will come through, and that goes on to Rob Man. See, that is the sort of play that you want. Rob Man was able to be that pushed up because he knew he had support coming in. Romulus well, is trying to be very aggressive. Showstopper beneath the tower. Stun's coming through. The Anivia is relatively low, but there is no chase through. Romulus does not have the damage to take it down. Did have the mythic, but it did not mean a damn. Skagent now teleporting in to try and challenge a Baron play that was being made by the Destiny Rebellion. I have no it idea why you'd be going for that. Skagent does go down, however. It looks like Destiny oh, Rebellion no. are going to try and make it out. Robman picks up the kill there. And that's another huge shutdown going on to the Darius. The Baron bait successful? I guess. Bornick and Haywire are counting their lucky stars that Sir Waffles made a little bit of a misplay there and altered them both out of kill range. Otherwise, they would have both gone down and that would have been a huge team fight for Divide Esports. But instead, they get pushed away. They're still going to convert this into a Drake, but they could have gotten more, possibly turned onto that Baron had Sir Waffles not have made that small mechanical misplay. Yeah, still going to be pretty good for the Divide, though, as they pick up their third Drake onto Soul Points. 27 and a half minutes start your stopwatches, ladies and gents. And despite all the madness on the map, every single fight that has come through, there's 800 gold between the teams. It is impressive. There's a real split here. The mid and bot side for Divide Esports have been playing fantastically, but the jungle and top side for the Destiny have had There's a Rob much Man. better time. Ultimate is burned from Terra. He's trying to try and land the hits of the Darkened Blade. Thankfully, the healing reduction that comes out from the fact that he has uh, picked up the Bramble Vest does mean that it's still a 2v1 situation, and there's actually a 2v1 reverse kill. Terra will be able to get over the Blast Cone to safety as well. Nexu looked for Romulus in the bot lane, but he was able to step out to safety. Good Aatrox mechanics there, hitting lots of knockups and sidestepping the Q out of the Darius, making sure the Darius didn't get any more healing, otherwise he definitely would have died there. It looks like Camisol is going to need to run away because there is a big fed Tristana coming up into that top lane. Yeah, was uh, smart enough not to kill the entire Krog camp, gets out to, uh, to a relatively safe distance. As that play uh, goes down. Oh, that's Things a ping. up toward the top side. Yeah, obviously you're going to want to try and get more kills on towards Sir Waffles. 4, 1, and 6 right now. Two items completed. Uh, still, surprisingly even though, only 400 gold between these two carries thanks to uh, the extra gold that has been picked up from proximity of turrets and plates and the like for Comic uh, Soul. He would have been in a much worse spot, but yeah, very even. He's been farming well. Oh, there is the hook landing onto the tower. They immediately call off the aggression, though, as there is a massive multi-man engage. Bornick catching on towards oh, Toby Watt. And there's a massive showstopper. Fantastic from Romulus. Down goes Sir Waffles. Down goes Inexu. And the chase is still on. Terra trying to escape to the hills. Another Noxian guillotine comes through. But knockup after knockup is landing. The chase is trying to come through, but this is two tanks with a whole bunch of healing doing a wet noodle fight effectively. And it looks like Terra is just going to try and either walk past the tower. Yes, he won't be executed. He's going to try and get away in this rush. He's looking for the Surely execute. Not. He's going to need Surely to not. sit around for quite yeah, a while. No. I think he... Yeah. There is the auto attack. Kamixel, single one, and then goes for the back. The disrespect. I don't love that from Kang Soul, if I'm honest. This Kaiser needs to carry team fights and now does not have a flash. Have a flash. Hmm. Haywire. <laughs> it looked like they walked through the wall there. 
He's going to continue to try and walk out to safety. The Dark Binding plus the Tormented Shadow will provide great healing. And there's Kamiak's soul with the Killer Instinct. Down goes Toby Watt. The wall will say no more. Thank you very much. As Cajun escapes towards the river. That was such a nice fight up by the Baron out of the side of Destiny Rebellion. They really played that one just out, no, out of the side of... Yeah, that's through Rebellion. My bad, yeah. Yeah, that's on blow. <laughs> hey, Wyatt managed to hit that binding onto Sir Waffles, catching him out, and then in comes the showstopper from Romulus, and once that big fed Tristana is down, there is no chance for the rest of the team. As much as the Anivia does Ooh, do a lot of damage... Here's the problem, though. So much CC, Robman gets absolutely removed, and I don't care if you have a Baron, it turns out that Anivia melts waves Baron or not. This is very true. Once again, we're seeing overaggression. We have multiple times seen Destiny Rebellion get themselves a early game lead. Obviously, not so much of an early game lead, but a mid game an lead, advantage. and then squander yep. it. Yes, yeah, so Waffles completely off on his own in the top lane, just shoving waves into that inner tower, just chipping down at it. It will eventually fall. The Baron buff is still on a couple of members of the Destiny Rebellion, but for how much longer? Not very. Not very. In fact, it's about to fall off. We've got 30 seconds until the Mountain Soul is of up and available for the side of Des uh, for the side of Divide Esports. If they Ooh, want a way though. to keep this game going. Hera comes over the wall, gets caught. They do not try to chase on it, though. There's Toby! Showstopper will get him away from Haywire. The Dark Binding almost lands on the Skagen, but he's got himself a Banshee's Veil. Two kills picked up in quick succession, and the members of Divide Esports will just turn, peel, and pick up that Mountain Soul. This pig's bursting out a single member that much harder. Divide Esports, lovely little play right there, managing to catch out two members, and now they're being zoned off of this Drake. It is going to be the Cloud Soul for Divide Esports. Oh, hot comes through, but Ooh. turns out the Dark Flight is more than enough to get Terra to safety. They're perfectly happy to just jump back over that wall. This Anivia is now even tankier, has the revive out of the passive, and is 8, 3, and 3. This Anivia hurts so bad, has also gone with the Banshees, so you're not even going to be allowed to touch him. Skagent does so much damage and has been playing fantastically all game. If Divide Esports are to turn this series around and get back and send us to a game 3, they are going to have to rely on Skagent and Sir Waffles to play this next set of fights flawlessly. Uh, divide or a game up. Sorry, if Skagent plays around. well, they Not win. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> if Skagent plays well, then they will take the series in... I was going to say convincing fashion, but these have been quite back and forth games. Nothing to be said that Destiny Rebellion are not putting their heart and soul into the series. Yeah, absolutely. If let's get this right this time around, if the Destiny Rebellion wish to pull back in this series, they're going to have to go through Camisol. He's the one with the most gold on the team, the most items. Has got the Kraken Sayer. Has got the. Lord Dominix, is that Lord Dominix? Yeah, the Lord yes. Dominix. So it's going to be able to melt through the big tanks and reduce a lot of the healing that comes out from both Terra and Toby Watt. These are big healing champions. And with that Lord Dominix, going to be able to stop some of that. That is their window uh, to come back in. It is. It certainly is. We can... <laughs> yes, Romulus, that is an enemy. Yes, Romulus, that is Skagen. You do not want to be there. <laughs> Run away and fast. Ooh, there's another potential catch. The strike break is good, but it's not that good. Ghost's pretty good, however. Teleport's coming through here. This is very, very chaotic. Trying to catch back and forth. Great face breaker here. They're going to land the showstopper onto Terra, but a lot of people taking a lot of damage here. Robman is the first to fall, and it is uh, Sir Waffles who is picking up kill after kill. Triple kill picked already. The chase is still on. Can they feed this Tristana any harder? No, it looks no. like Haywire and Kamiak Soul are going to get away safely. Ran out of resets, unfortunately. And there's nothing on the map for them to really take and transition this into, but it was a fantastic fight for... <clears throat> fantastic fight for Divide Esports. Terra might be caught out by Camisol. No, I'm just gonna walk yeah. away. Still doing a hell of a lot of damage. This is a mid to late game Kaisa. Oh, oh with the hook <laughs> from Nexo. The flash is immediate, though. I get the feeling that a certain Kaiser might be wanting a, a uh, QSS before too long. 
or a GA, either or, because that is or both. a lot of both. Definitely both with the amount of CC coming out. Uh, the Baron is coming up in 20 seconds. I yep. imagine that Divide Esports can just walk right up there and take it if they want to. Pretty convincingly. Vision is very much lacking for both teams, though, and it looks like the, the uh, Destiny Rebellion are oh, going to look to try and punish the backs. There is the catch. CC lock up, and so Waffles is shut down. Kill credit does go to Fornic, but that's, that's not still going to be... That was a lot of shock down gold that the support just got. Yeah, but that is an AD carry down, and now we can see... Destiny Rebellion are going to try for this Baron play once again. Last time it did work decently well for them. Of course, they didn't get the Baron, but they did. Agent is in base, uh, no TP. It's a decent way away. They're going to burst this one down. Kamixol absolutely decimating the Baron here. Robman doing a great job of zoning off the enemy, and they will safely and securely pick up their second Baron of the game. You've got to question the decision making, making out of Sir Waffles on that one. Why base in the enemy jungle? When you've got so much CC on the enemy team, if you get hit by that Dark Binding, if you get hit by that Leona E, you are going to be bound up and not allowed to move for an age. Why risk it? Why risk it when you're in a good spot as a team and you are one of the main damage threats on your team? I don't, I don't understand that one. Yeah, locked up and shut down and allows the Destiny Rebellion to find themselves another Baron, another opportunity to push waves in and have them last more than a quarter of a flat second against the Zinnipia. <laughs> uh, it'll last half a second instead. Yep, that's that's double duration. Oh, Robman is going to be the one who gets caught here. Very tanky, obviously, on the Darius. The follow-up will not be there. Void Seeker does fly wide, and of course, a minute on the board until the Elder Drake spawns. On the side of Destiny Rebellion, you are gonna have to take this soul away. Uh, this not yeah. soul, this Elder Dragon away. Yeah, or you are yeah. gonna just lose this game in one push. Doesn't matter if you've got the Baron, it's over for you. They need to push out their waves, get their vision set up, and fight this one basically to the death. They need a really big team fight out of Robman. If he can get into the back line, start stacking that passive, then maybe they've got a chance. If So Waffles is just allowed to sit in auto attack, it's over. No bueno indeed. I like that the vision setup is here, so they are, uh, Destiny Rebellion are forcing Divide into Esports to come to them. You know, imperfect information is your best friend. However, there was a ward missed here. It does mean that they know some of what is going on. Kamiaxol is being used to push in the midwave. Obviously, will be able to join a fight at a moment's notice, however, with the Killer Instinct. Romulus is just going to get that bottom lane pushing out. There is priority for the side of Destiny Rebellion into this pit. It is not I'm a great situation for Divide to have to walk in. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact that Haywire took away the Blast Cone. You know, denying an element of entry here. The front line goes all in. Gonna die. Showstopper coming out from Romulus. Every member of that team is stuck in the middle of everything. Double kill picks it up. Bro, Kamiak Soul. Skagent, however, they are walking into a choke point. You do not want to be engaging into an Anivia in those circumstances. You should just turn back and take that Elder. Skagent nearly died by just walking He's onto the, the egg. Onto He's soil. actually been jumped into the egg. Walks in. So Waffles does take down Robman, but I do think Skagent will fall here. Over aggression, however, I think. Skagent does get out to safety with the flash, actually. Kamixol will take down So Waffles, and Haywire is going to fall as well. Kamixol died too. This is actually a huge overcommit. Skagent does not die thanks to the egg. Gets out to safety, and the overall win is for Divide Esports. Ages left on the death timers. Next person to come up is Fornic and Five. And what can a Leona do in this situation? The answer is nothing. Divide Esports get the Elder. It's so unfortunate for Destiny Rebellion. They managed to team fight beautifully. Romulus had yeah. one of the nicest face breaker into showstopper com combos I've ever seen. Really was swinging that team fight all the way around. But there were just missed Dark Binding after missed Dark Binding from Haywire, and his team got so low from Skagen's ultimate, and they stuck around way too long. They should have taken their win and backed off. 
got their health bars yep. back, and there were de long enough death timers that they probably could have gotten in and taken the Elder Drake. Now it's an Elder Drake on top of a mountain, so... And de Divine Esports are in such a good position to take this game. Yeah, we'll see if they can set up a, you know, set up fights to make best advantage of this. Honestly, taking advantage of Elder, so Elder is so easy. You run at them. You run at them and you land some form of CC. They need to do it soon, though. It is not a long buff. Yeah, about half of the duration, I think, on there still. So they are going to shove in this mid lane as hard as they can. Obviously, the Baron has since fallen off. Just over a minute until, uh, just under a minute and a half until that comes back up. Kamek Soul doing a decent job of clearing the waves. Obviously, not empowered minions means that they do die pretty quickly. Oh, this is a items. battle of big wave clear. The Anivia going to shove the wave instantly, and then the Akathian Rain coming out of Kami Exol is just going to melt the wave straight back. Bit of a stalemate right here. Yeah, this is just a war of attrition to see who runs, uh, who makes the misplay first, who steps a little too far forwards, who gets caught by the ice wall, and I say Destiny Rebellion are doing pretty darn good job of not being caught on the wrong side of it as it stands. Doing a very good job of just staying back, clearing their waves, they have to wait this out. If they want to fight, and we know now that they can win some big team fights, they have to wait for this Elder Dragon buff to wear off, otherwise they're just going to die. With the amount of health that they had after the team fight last time, the Elder buff would have taken them straight out. So just Ooh, need to wait it out, clear their waves, see if they can hold onto this tower. They have plenty of non-committal wave clear. There is the hook, lands onto Romulus, and that's not the target you necessarily want. Stormbringer comes through, however. Kamiak Soul gets dropped very, very low. There is the first kill. Skagent put onto a rampage and the Elder still picking away. Skagent will get taken down, actually. The Noxian guillotine will finish that one off. However, one, uh, two members of Destiny Rebellion are already down. Actually, a two for two trade here, and it looks like they're feeling pretty confident. The Elder has fallen off now, actually. If Destiny Rebellion wanted to get a fight, they could try and do so. The, the flash binding does not land onto Sir Waffles. They're continually trying to push forwards for the aggression here, but there, 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 there is no way you're going to be able to actually fully chase this one down. They're pinging onto the Baron. I. No, the jungler dead. is down. The jungler is down for the side of Divide Esports, and they have their jungler up. This is a risky call, though. But with Skagen down, a lot of the damage and a lot of the fear that they would have had of Divide Esports is gone. I think they're just going to take this in one go. Yep, they managed to do it. Third oh. Baron picked up for Destiny. I love that call. Yeah. The push straight down the mid lane, make sure that their opponents are not able to come in and contest. And turns out, with a Morgana and a Kaiser, Baron is just... Baron is just butter. Especially a Kaiser with that Kraken Slayer. Just gonna go down instantly. Absolutely. The Items coming out of this Kaiser means that she is just going to shred people, but she's not been allowed to get in onto the enemy very often. Often pushed away, finding it quite hard to just free hit. If you've got these big impactful items and you're not free hitting, it doesn't really matter. Whereas the non-committal attacks that can come out from the Anivia means that they are a lot safer in these team fights. Looks that way, and again, the waves are going to be pushed in. This is kind of the reverse situation you want to be for uh, if you're Destiny Rebellion. You want to be shoving waves into the enemy, but, well, the, there's an Anivia. There is an Anivia. You're always going to be pushed in. Just a little slower with this, Baron Buff. Obviously, if the Anivia isn't with the rest of the team, then it does open Apparently up the opportunity top. for Destiny Spaten to push does... up. Yeah, Skagen does have TP, though, so they have to be careful. Although... If Skagen does not have the passive up, never mind, Skagen has the passive up. Uh, if they didn't, then obviously a teleport play could be nice suicidal. Question mark pings in the jungle for the side of Destiny Rebellion. They don't want to push too far. They know that there is possibly a Skagen on a flank. You're not usually seeing an Anivia flank, but when the Anivia is 10, 4, and 10, well, it is quite possible. Yeah, completed full build, six items, 360 CS, Romulus gets caught on too, good damage, very cr crazy damage, Romulus almost goes down, but does not actually die, we can see it's 50 seconds until the Elder respawns. In Romulus has been finding great engages, but he is so far behind on levels and gold that he just dies almost instantly. 
Oh, yeah. Drake coming up in 30 seconds. They're not going to be allowed the opportunity to escape. There is the Soul Shackles, there is the Zonyas, but they are broken immediately. Haywire is going to get taken down, and the Elder once again laid bare for the side of uh, Divide Esports to take. Shouldn't be any contest here. I, I just want to see Divide, um, Destiny Rebellion just say, okay, our jungle is dead. We can't really take this. If they push too far forwards, they are all going to die, but I don't know how willing they are to just let this go. I, it seems like they're trying to scare Divide, but Divide are, f are a, a man up and have the zoning tool of the century in a 10 kill Anivia. There, there is no way in for this. He tries for the steal with the Sovo Flare, but no. That is a You were a Silas, second. maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. That is a second Elder buff for the side of Divide Esports. They are just going to shove straight down this middle lane, try take this inhibitor, and then they can switch into possibly a 1-3-1, keep the pressure up mid lane, get these waves pushed in down the sides, and there is no way that Destiny can this push their way in and edible. try to take a fight. Surely this has to be endable though. They can push the inhibitor, they've got a wave here. Not a barren wave though, I suppose, so it will die fairly quickly. Kaiser does good damage, but the zoning is there. The area on the Anivia ultimate is just so large, and it's it's so difficult for Destiny Rebellion to find an angle to actually get these fights started. Absolutely. They need to be careful, need to stay quite backed off until the buff is down, like we said before. But they're just going to keep up the pressure of this siege. Anivia can kill these waves instantly, and they, the side of Destiny Rebellion are just going to be kept under their tower the entire game. Yep, and big damage coming through. Obviously, that is a level 17 Tristana. Insane range right there. And uh, they're just waiting for the first in, uh, super minion to show. And uh, speak of the devil, there it is, walking, swaggering down that mid lane. Will, of course, uh, it will still go down, but that is the opportunity. Another wave. And they can just attrition this game out. It's basically what Anivia does best. Zone, attrition. Make sure Ooh, that the enemy can't get... It's going to die. Oh, oh, He's going to go to the egg at least. Yeah, will get knocked to the end. Doesn't actually manages to get away. Scouted is now free to hit onto the back line. Turrets will fall back and forth. That's actually a red turret that went down in the bottom lane. Robman will fall here as well. Double kill. Two members down. The wave player is still there though. Haywire and Kamiaxol are alive. The GA is available as well. The damage is coming through. Toby Watt will take down Haywire. Down goes Romulus as well. And I'm afraid, Kamiaxol, you will not be able to save this game for your team. Knocked down into the GA. The Nexus falls and Divide Esports will take the series 2-0. Two, two, what a lovely fight right at the end. It was a nice binding that was landed, but the gold was just so far in the side of Divide Esports that it didn't matter. What a series from Divide Esports. Great early games coming out from the team. And if we're giving out MVPs, then Skagent deserves it all the way. What a fantastic series this man has had. Yeah, the Tristana performance is was uh, fantastic in game one. Obviously, a couple of jitters in both games, but it's safe to say that that Anivia was a huge part of why they took that game two as well. Very, very nice to see from him. So, are we going to do interviews, or are we just saying goodbye? I don't think we need to do it. I think interviews are more the uh, playoffs, playoffs yeah. type thing. So, what I shall do is say once again to look to my left. There is a nice little logo there to uh, Verta Gear affiliate link below the stream and over beyond in Blox's direction. Obviously, join the Discord, follow our Twitter so you can see whenever we're doing these series and I can promise more fiestas like this to come through the rest of the Platinum League. And of course, tomorrow, I believe it is at 8 o'clock CST, there will be a, a series being played out from the Diamond League, the first one, uh, first showing of that league that we will see this season. Thank you all so much for joining us. We have had a fantastic time here. It's really good to get this Season 9 kicked back. off. So good to be back. So good to be back. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. I am Brackish Brit. You have been Black Blocks, uh, and we will see you next time in the Phoenix League.